So hello and welcome back to my channel where today we are joining the character that is actually my my main main and this is Donna and if you didn't know World of Warcraft it's not all raids it's not all dungeons it's not even all about gear sometimes it's about the silly things in life and the other day I had Donna do one of the silliest and sometimes what feels like sometimes the most useless achievement in the game. If you don't know about achievements, there are tons of achievements that you can get in game. Some of them are big and some of them are small and some of the ones that don't give you anything at all I guess they only give you maybe a feeling of personal satisfaction. And one of those achievements has to do with the fountain that is right behind me. That achievement's name is the Wish Remover. And to do it, you just have to sit at this fountain and fish until you have fished up all 57 coins that are in this fountain. Unfortunately, you can fish the same coin many more times than once, so you can be here fishing for a long time. Now, my silly and sometimes broken brain decided I was going to do this in one sitting. And I did. It was one long sitting. I sat at this fountain for four hours, and I fished, and I got them all. But... All you get out of it is an achievement. You get no title, you get no toy. There's a similar achievement in Old Dalran, in Northrend, where you actually get a toy. It's a kind of useless toy to go with a kind of useless achievement, but at least you get a toy. So I thought about it and I said, you know what? I'm going to at least make this a worthwhile achievement. So what we're going to do is we are going to go through and we are going to visit and learn something about everybody who threw a coin into the fountain. And if you would like to come along with me while we do that, Donna and K9 are going to go on an adventure around the Broken Isles and visit everybody. Might take a little while because like I said, there's 57 of these coins, and we're going to have to track down the people that chucked them into the well. So, off we go. Alright, well, our very first coin that is on the list is Stelagosa's silver coin. And Stelagosa actually proved very hard for me to track down. I couldn't find her in Legion, so I had to go all the way to the Dragon Isles and track her down here on the battlefront. Stelagosa's silver coin, her wish that she pitched into the fountain is, please protect my grandfather. And we will see her, her grandfather's wish later on in the list, but Stelagosa is a pretty awesome dragon in her own right. We first meet Stelagosa all the way back in Legion in Azuna, where she's been captured by Overseer Lykel of the Burning Legion. And there's a big old quest chain where your order hall frees her, and she aids her saviors by slaying the Felsworn Cyana Night Gave, a night elf with uh, not very night elf interests and then she leads you back to where you're going to be helping Cadgar as he helps out around the azure wing repose which is where her grandfather is and there's a big old long quest chain there and it's amazing i'm not going to spoil it for you if you haven't done it but it leads to one of the saddest quest chains in World of Warcraft, and that kind of leads us into our next coin, so let's head on out. Now, our second coin, unfortunately, 
the NPC is no longer in the spot that he's supposed to be. I swear I've seen him here before, but you can find him in Azuna, and his quest chain is quite literally, I think, one of the saddest quest chains in the entire game, and that is Runus the Shamed. He is a Nightborn. He was exiled from Suramar City, and without the Nightwell, he began to wither. To sustain his hunger for magic, he hunted down blue whelps that were near the Azure Wing Repose, and you confront him, and uh, he begs for forgiveness, offers to help the blue dragons who were under attack by the Withered, and, you know, you go on this great long quest chain with him. He's always asking you for more mana. He's always just gobbling up the mana jewels that he gets. But he, um, he helps out. He does everything he can. And in the end, even though the, the Azure Wing Repose is saved, Runus isn't. And it's very, very sad. And his coin reads, I wish I had some mana. Right now. Now, now. And that's very much in fitting with Runus the Shamed. So that's one of the more tragic tales in the Wish Remover. So moving on, we're going to head on to our next, uh, next coin tosser. All right, so our next coin is also an issue because I'm pretty sure that the NPC who owns the coin is no longer among the living. Or at least I can't find him. This is actually turning out to be a much harder video than I thought it was going to be. I figured this was going to be easy. I was just going to track down all of these coin holders and show them to you and it was going to be really easy, but... The coin is Okuna Longtusk, and as you can see, he is a Tuskar, possibly from Molokai Village, which is out in Northrend, and he is an escaped Pokemon, basically, because these two, jo these two sea giants over here are basically doing Pokemon battles, and he wants you to help free the slaves and other pit fighters. You have to go over here to Boss Whale Belly and basically join one of the Pokemon teams here. It's kind of hilarious. And they toss you into the ring and you basically Pokemon battle. And it always makes me laugh. I guess maybe doing these these uh, videos on a character that's done all of this might be an issue, but you know what? At least I can show you where Okuna would be if he were here, and that is right here in Shipwreck Cove in Azuna. And Okuna's coin that he tossed into the fountain says, The adventure has been formidable, but I am far from my Molokai. I wish to soon see home. Unfortunately, I don't think he ever gets to see home. Um, if you know anything else about him, drop it in the comments below because I am very curious. I don't remember what happens to him, but I seem to remember him passing away at the end of the quest chain. I could be wrong, though. Anyway... On to the next one. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier. Or maybe it won't. Alright, so our next NPC who tossed a coin into the fountain is this guy here. This is Glock the Rumble. And Glock is actually kind of sad. Um, he is being held prisoner by the Hate Coil Naga here in Azuna. And he really would like to be free. Unfortunately, if you talk to him, he says, You a lucky lady. You can break your chain and walk right out the door. Glock can break his chains very easy, but can Glock fit out the door? Nope. And it turns out 
that poor Glock must have been brought into this cave as a young sea giant because now he's stuck. So even if Glock is, could break his chains and escape from this cave, he can't actually do that. And Glock's coin reads, Glock wish Glock could fit out of this cave. And you know, I've tossed some baby spice on him to shrink him and it doesn't work. He doesn't get up and leave. So poor Glock, it's a bit of a tragedy. Our next coin in the fountain was pitched in by none other than Taronda Whisperwind, the High Priestess of Elun, the, the Night Elf, former General of the Sentinels, and she, I mean, she's such a lore character, I could not even begin to give all of her backstory in 10 videos. She took up the mantle of the Night Warrior. She's had a rough go of it. And her coin... Would you ask of the Kaldorai? Simply like her, says, that I might protect those I hold dear and continue to reflect the grace and light of a loon. And I chose to travel back in time and to go to Taldrassil, which is where most players actually first met Taronda. Way back then, she didn't have Malfurion standing by her side because he was still in the Emerald Dream. She's been through a lot, Taronda, and I did think about going to Bellameth and seeing her and Malfurion there, but in the end, I decided to do a little bit of wibbly-wobbly time travel, go back in time, and see Taronda in a, a simpler time. So that was Taronda Whisperwind's coin, and now we're moving on again. Our next coin in the fountain was tossed in by a ghost, which is always interesting. And that is the ghost of Lord Curtilos Ravencrest, who you can actually see and battle in Black Rook Hold as the, the final boss of that dungeon encounter. And Lord Ravencrest was a absolutely noble, he was not of the Highborn, but he, he regarded the Highborn with some suspicion, but he was a level-headed man, a skilled warrior, an inspiring leader out on the battlefield, and he actually fell to um, the... He was a member of the Kaldori Resistance during the War of the Age, uh, Ancients, and he actually ended up participating in a ritual to separate Illidan's body from his soul. And he ended up getting to the point where he saw everyone as a demon. And so referring to that, Lord Curtilos Ravencrest's spectral coin reads, perhaps if we curb these endless tides of demons, then some color may return to the world. Possibly referring to how dead players all see the world in black and white. But I thought that was really interesting. It He wouldn't be in Black or Cold as a boss if Gul'dan had not conducted the ritual to separate Illidan's soul from his body. And, you know... Curtilus, he participated in that, and he paid the final price. But maybe not before regretting it a little bit and tossing a coin into the fountain. Now our next coin was Little Penelope Heathrows, and she's actually not very far from Black Rook Hold, so it was a actually very easy way to find her. I'm kind of proud of myself. 
and Penelope is the daughter of Mayor Heathrow. They are here in Braden's Brook, a small Gilnean settlement in Azuna, or is this not Azuna? What area am I in? I am in Valshara at this point, not, no longer in Azuna. But Penelope and her family, they are from Gilnaeus, as you can kind of tell if you look around at the village houses. It's one of my favorite areas in Legion, just because I love Gilnaean architecture. It's beautiful. I don't know if these guys are actually worgen or not. Um, that's, that's one of those good questions that I'm not exactly sure of the answer. But little Penelope, you help her out. She is initially located in the cellar of Heathrow Manor. And she's, she's lost down there. You go, you fight her would-be attackers. And she takes a secret shortcut back to the village. She just scoots on out of there. And from then on, she is standing here in Braden's Brook next to her father. Our next coin actually comes from the Ancient of Lore, Elothir. Elothir was one of the three archdruids of Valshara, and currently he is in the middle of the Emerald Nightmare raid, and I wasn't going to actually go in and fight my way all the way to him, so I figured I would just hang out here in Thastala Basin, which is where you first beat him as he is... Um, trying to rescue his al alkalites who've been kind of petrified. They're, they're having some issues, you know, and nothing hurts Elthalir more than, than taking a life, but you kind of have to do it to rescue his alkalites. Once his grove was safe, Elthalir was free to meet Malfurion in the grove of Cenaris, where you summon Ysera, and unfortunately, despite everything that you can do, Cenaris is consumed by the nightmare. Malfurion leaves to hunt down Xavius. He ends up in the nightmare also. And you end up going into the Emerald Nightmare yourself. And you end up fighting Elothir until you purify him there in the Emerald Nightmare. But... I'm assuming kind of before he goes, Elothir tosses a coin into a fountain with a wish. And his wish is actually fished up on Elothir's golden leaf. It is fished up and it says, Hmm, no coins. I wonder if this will suffice. And you know what? I think it will. And our last two coins for today's video actually come from King Murgle Murgle and Murky. King Murgle Murgle is actually a character that we first meet all the way back in Wrath of the Lich King. And he first appeared at the Winterfen Retreat in the Borean Tundra. He had originally come to the area to observe the Winterfin Murlocs. You know, he was keeping his distance, taking his notes on their day-to-day -day life. But um, eventually a Makura emerged from their caverns, used his magic to control most of the tribe, and they named the reluctant King Murgle Murgle as their king. Now, Murgle Murgle is actually a member of Dita, which, yes, it is basically WoW's version of PETA. It stands for the Druids for the Ethical and Humane Treatment of Animals. And when you're in the Vorian Tundra, you can do a lot of questing for them, where you're basically hunting down all of Hemet Nessingwary's agents. If you shoot any of the wildlife in the Borean Tundra, you get a debuff on you that marks you as bloodstained and any members of Dita will attack you on sight. But, you know, King Murgle Murgle, once the Cataclysm rolled around, 
He actually was at Sarathea's Roost, still in Murloc costume, you know, because he's, he's going to totally do that. And he will fight with you during the Protectors of Hyjal dailies out in the Firelands. And then here in Legion, where he tossed in his coin, he was, um, he found another group of murlocs. And he started raising this young murloc right here, Murky. And, you know, he wants to help Murky grow stronger. And so you recruit a bunch of tadpoles with Murky. King Murgle Murgle has you mind meld with Murky and get the, the murlocs a new home where they can grow and flourish and, and you know, form a new tribe. You know, the, the cave will belong to the Murklock tribe. And, you know, he's going to stay with Murky. He's going to watch this tribe kind of be the, the king of the tribe, at least we assume. He also shows up in battle for Azeroth. He runs Murgle's Bar and Grill, which is full of Murloc patrons. There is a world quest out there where he compromises on his principles a little bit and asks you to go hunt crabs. He realizes that this is contradictory to the overall goal of Dita, but he also says it's necessary because the murlocs out there in Nazjatar are a little bit more ruthless and they want to eat the human patrons at his bar, so he needs to keep them fed. Overall, I really like King Murgle Murgle and Murky and their coins. King Murgle Murgle's coin reads... Some days, I think the Murlocs don't appreciate everything that I do for them. You know what, King, King Murgle Murgle? I don't think they do either. Also, underneath that costume, King Murgle Murgle actually is a night elf. And our last coin is tossed in from Murky. And true to form, let's see if I can do this properly, Murky's coin says... Mer gurgle mer gurgle and that is as close as i can get to becoming a murloc or at least speaking murloc so friday we're gonna keep on going with the wish remover because i'm actually having a lot of fun doing this and i'm learning a lot about all of these characters so let me know in the comments down below if you have actually completed this um this achievement. Like I said, I kind of wish that I would have gotten something more for it, which is why I decided to go on this quest and meet all of the people who threw coins in. So we've gone through about 10 or 15 of them. This might take a couple weeks, or maybe I can start to go faster. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to me babble. Thank you for, you know, leaving comments if you do, and uh, just have an awesome day.